Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Wet and Science Revision. In this video we're going to look at Group 7 displacement reactions or halogen displacement reactions. We're going to look at predicting whether they will occur and which elements they will involve, writing word equations for them and identifying a colour change. So a reminder of what a displacement reaction is. Displacement basically means kicking something out and taking its place. So one element is kicked out of a compound that it's in by a more reactive element. So the key parts there is that something's being kicked out and something else will take its place. The thing that's doing the kicking out must be more reactive than the thing that's being kicked out. We're going to focus on the group 7 elements. Those are fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, otherwise known as the halogens. Now these have different reactivities. So as you go down the group, they get less reactive. So fluorine is the most reactive and iodine is the least reactive. They get less reactive as you go down. And this is important for deciding whether or not a displacement reaction can occur because a more reactive halogen can displace a less reactive halogen, but a less reactive one wouldn't be able to displace a more reactive one. So you're looking for a more reactive one kicking out a less reactive one. So an example, an example of this would be fluorine would be able to displace chlorine or bromine or iodine from a compound because it's more reactive than them. Chlorine could displace bromine or iodine because it's more reactive than them, but it wouldn't be able to displace fluorine. Bromine would only be able to displace iodine not the others because it's less reactive than them and iodine actually can't displace any of those because it's the least reactive so it's not more reactive than any of them. So to determine whether this happens you need to decide is the one of the halogens more reactive than another one. So here's an example of this. We have identified a halogen that can displace chlorine. So we're looking for one of these elements that would be able to displace chlorine. In order to displace it, it would have to be more reactive than chlorine because chlorine can only be displaced by an halogen that's more reactive. So you're looking for a more reactive element. The only one that's more reactive is fluorine. So fluorine is more reactive than chlorine, so fluorine would be able to displace chlorine. And the answer fluorine would get you the mark. Here's some practice questions on this, figuring out which elements could displace another element or be displaced by another element. So number one, identify a halogen that can displace bromine. Identify a halogen that cannot displace bromine. Identify a halogen that could be displaced by bromine, so one that bromine would be able to displace. Explain why fluorine is able to displace chlorine. And finally, explain why iodine is able to be displaced by chlorine. So that means why chlorine can displace iodine. Pause the video and give these questions a try. So for a halogen to be able to displace bromine, it's got to be more reactive than bromine. So you have two choices here, either fluorine or chlorine. Either one would get you the mark. One that's not able to displace bromine must not be more reactive, so it's less reactive than bromine. The only one we have is iodine. One that could be displaced by bromine, that bromine would be able to displace, bromine's got to be more reactive than it. The only one that's less reactive than bromine, again, is iodine. Fluorine is able to displace chlorine because fluorine is more reactive than chlorine. Don't just say that it's reactive, make sure you're saying that it's more reactive than chlorine. Make it a comparison. And iodine is able to be displaced by chlorine. Chlorine can displace iodine because it's more reactive than iodine. Or you could say the opposite, which is that iodine is less reactive than chlorine. You could say the converse and get the mark for that as well. We also need to be able to write word equations for these reactions. So if we say we take some fluorine and we add it to some potassium chloride. So the fluorine is on its own, it's just the element. And potassium chloride, that's a compound containing potassium and chlorine. So because chlorine is in a compound, we call it potassium chloride, not potassium chlorine. They always end in "-ide", when they're in a compound. Now, because fluorine is more reactive, the one that's on its own is more reactive than the one that's in the compound, that means fluorine will be able to displace chlorine and kick it out of that compound. So because fluorine is more reactive, it will displace chlorine from the compound that it's in it will kick it out and take its place. So the reactants we start with are potassium chloride and fluorine. But what's going to happen is that really reactive fluorine is going to kick out the chlorine from the compound, take its place. So we will produce instead our products, which are potassium fluoride 
and chlorine. So all that's happened is they've swapped over. Again, note that it's potassium fluoride now. It's become an ide because it's in a compound and the chloride has become chlorine because it's on its own. So if you've got a halogen on its own, it must be an ene and if you've got a halogen in a compound, it must be an ide. We don't need to worry about the potassium. It could have been sodium chloride, it could have been magnesium chloride. It doesn't really matter. They're not important. We just call them a spectator. So a question could be, complete the word equation for the reaction between fluorine and potassium chloride. We start with potassium chloride and we add fluorine and then we produce potassium something and something. So you just fill in, in the blanks to name the product. Well, if we've got fluorine being more reactive than chlorine, it's going to kick out or displace the chlorine. They're going to swap over. So we're going to get potassium fluoride and chlorine on its own. So fluorine becomes potassium fluoride and potassium chloride, we displace the chlorine and it becomes chlorine on its own. Here's some practice questions for writing or completing word equations. A student reacted chlorine and potassium iodide. This produced potassium chloride and one other product. Name the other product. So you're just figuring out chlorine plus potassium iodide. You would make potassium chloride. And what's the other thing that we would make? Number two, complete the word equation for the reaction of potassium bromide and chlorine. They're going to give you the start of the equation. You just need to complete the end of the equation. Potassium bromide plus chlorine. Write a word equation so they're not giving you anything on this one. You're writing it from scratch for potassium iodide and bromine. And then again, writing a word equation for sodium, bromide and fluorine. Pause the video and have a go at these. So if we had potassium iodide and chlorine, chlorine would displace the iodine because it's more reactive. So they'd swap over and we'd have potassium chloride and iodine on its own. So the name of the other product would be iodine. Make sure you don't say iodide or you won't get the mark. It has to be potassium chloride and it must be iodine because it's on its own. For the second one, the chlorine, which is more reactive, will displace the bromide from the compound. So we'll have potassium chloride plus bromine. Again, you must make sure that it's potassium chloride for the compound and that it's bromine for the one that's on its own. Between potassium iodide and bromine, we write that equation out. Bromine is more reactive, it will displace the iodide. So that will give us potassium bromide and iodine. Bromide, because it's in a compound, and iodine, because it's on its own. And then the last one, very similar, we're just writing it from scratch. We start with sodium bromide and fluorine. They swap over, the fluorine displaces the bromide, and we end up with sodium fluoride and bromine. It must be fluoride in the compound and it must be bromine on its own. You also need to be able to identify a colour change during these reactions. So the reactants and the products will probably be different colours. So our four halogens have different colours. Fluorine is yellow, chlorine is green, bromine is brown, although you might see orange or red, and iodine is grey. So depending on which of these is on their own, that's the colour that the mixture will look. So let's say we start with some potassium chloride and some fluorine. And we produce potassium fluoride and chlorine because the fluorine is more reactive and it displaces the chloride. If any of these halogens are part of a compound, like potassium chloride, they will be colourless. The compounds containing them are colourless, but when they're on their own, like fluorine is here, it will have its normal colour. So it will be yellow. So if you've got a colourless liquid and a yellow liquid, overall the reactants are going to look yellow. Sorry, fluorine's a yellow gas. Then in the products, potassium fluoride, because the fluorine's in a compound, it's going to be colourless. The chlorine's on its own, so it's going to show its green colour. So overall, a colourless chemical and a green chemical will appear green overall. So you're starting with chemicals that appeared yellow, and you're finishing with products that appear green. So there will be a colour change from yellow to green during the reaction. And that's what you would see. So around this, they might ask you a question like, identify the colour change in this reaction. Sodium bromide plus fluorine produces sodium fluoride plus bromine. So we need to think about the colours of the different compounds and elements. So sodium bromide, because the bromine is part of a compound, it will be colourless. It won't appear brown as bromine normally would. It will be colourless. 
The fluorine, because it's on its own, will appear its normal yellow colour. So the reactants overall will look yellow. The fluoride in sodium fluoride will be colourless, but the bromine, because it's on its own, will appear brown. So overall, the products are going to appear brown or orange. So the colour change overall, we're going from yellow to brown. So when you're asked to identify the colour change, that's what you would write, yellow to brown. Here's some practice questions about colour changes. Number one, identify the colour change in this reaction. Potassium iodide plus fluorine produces potassium fluoride and iodine. So think about the colours. You're looking for the colours of the halogens that are on their own at either side of the equation. The second reaction is sodium bromide plus chlorine produces sodium chloride and bromine. And number three, a slightly trickier question. Chlorine was added to a solution of a compound of another group seven element. There was a reaction and the colour changed from green to grey. Identify the group seven element that was present in the compound. So you need to work out what would have turned the product grey. Pause the video and give these a try. So for the first one, the potassium iodide would be colourless because it's a compound. The fluorine would be yellow. The potassium fluoride would be colourless because it's a compound. And the iodine would appear grey as normal. So we've got yellow for the reactants and we've got grey for the products. So the colour change would be yellow to grey. The bromide and sodium bromide is colourless and the chlorine will be green because it's on its own. The sodium chloride will be colourless and the bromine on its own will be brown. So our reactants are green, our products are brown, our colour change will be green to brown. Now in this last one, the green colour at the beginning is coming from the chlorine on its own. It's going grey, so we're looking for a grey group 7 element that would have been displaced. And we know the grey group 7 element is iodine, so that would be the answer. It's just going to be iodine that's causing the grey colour. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please feel free to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are any videos you want me to do, uh, any topics you want me to do a video on and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.